What's up YouTube, just helping you out here, and today I'll be going over number 33 in chapter 7 of the Fundamentals of Physics, 8th edition, by Gerald Walker, and chapter 7 is on kinetic energy and work, and in particular number 33 goes over the kinetic energy and work of a spring. And this question is a three-star difficulty, which means it is in the group of the most difficult problems of the chapter. I will now post a picture of the question. Please either take a picture of it so for your reference while I'm talking about the problem, or you can use your textbook if you have it with you. And it would be helpful if you had a calculator while you do this problem. Okay, so the problem talks about um, it talks about a spring that is that with a block on the end of it, and it gives us the spring constant, which is k. It also gives us the initial position of the spring, which is x equals zero, and it talks about an applied force on with the on the block that is three newtons. So part A asks about the position of the block. So an equation that we have that we could find the position of the block with would be the kinetic energy equals the work of the spring plus the potential energy of the spring. Now in this particular situation it's asking for the position of the, the block in an in initial state. In an initial state there is no velocity. So since kinetic energy is one half mv squared the kinetic energy will be zero. So this means that the work of the spring is going to equal the potential energy of the spring. Now I know you're going to say, oh, work in this case work should be negative, but since we're only looking for the position of the spring, positive and negative do not particularly matter in this situation. So the work of the spring is force times distance that the spring displaces, which equals one half kx squared. Now in this equation I'm only plugging in I'm only plugging in equi like uh terms. No nothing special yet. Now in this case the distance is going to be equal to x since the dis this distance that it displaces is the same as x which also is a displacement. So I'm going to rewrite this as force times x equals one half kx squared x squared, I'm sorry. So we have an x on both sides, so we can cross out these x's which means force equals one half kx and so we can multiply by two on both sides which will give us 2f equals kx and then we can solve for x where x equals 2f over k and we know these values which are given in the problem where f is equal to 3 and k is equal to 50. So we can rewrite this as 2 times 3 over 50, which equals 6 over 50. And when you plug that into your calculator, you will get 0.12 meters. And that will be the answer to part A. Now, actually, let's write here. Let's write part A. So now part B. Part B asks for the work that has been done on the block by the applied force. So, like we have set up there, work equals force times distance. So, we know that, and we just found the distance up here, and we know the applied force is 3, which is from the problem. So, we can just write work equals 3 times 0.12, which equals 0.36 joules. And for part C, it asks the work that has been done on the block by the spring force. So if the force here is 3, and that is pointing, the work done is pointing in the positive direction. Now if we, since it's asking for the spring force, which is in the opposite direction, it is going to be equal but opposite to the force by the block. So in this situation, it is going to be negative. 0.36 joules. Just the negative of the, the blocks. Alright, and now for part D, 
it asks what the block's position is when its kinetic energy is maximum. So since we're looking for kinetic energy, we're going to again, and we're using a spring, so we're again going to use the same equation we started with, which is K equals work plus potential energy of the spring. And this time, since we're looking for the maximum, the velocity will not be zero. So we're going to need kinetic energy in this equation. So we'll rewrite, we will rewrite this with the values from the last equation. So it was force times distance, which in this case, I'm just going to write it as x, plus 1 half kx squared. So that is our kinetic energy equation. And again, we can plug in the values we know. So k equals, the force is given as 3 plus, and we know the kinetic energy is 50. 50 times 1 half is 25, so 25x squared. Now, since we're looking for kinetic energy at a, as a maximum, we need to take the derivative of this equation and set it equal to zero. For those of you who have taken calculus, you know how to take derivatives. This is a pretty basic derivative, but for those of you who don't, I will explain it. So this is technically equal to 3x to the first. And to take the derivative, you need to multiply the exponent times the coefficient in the front of the x, and then subtract this by 1. So that's going to leave us with 0, since we're setting the derivative equal to 0, equal to multiply 3 times 1, so it's going to be 3 again, x, and then 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. And then over here, we're going to multiply 2 times 25, which is 50, x, and then 2 minus 1 is 1. So we're going to get 0 equals 3 plus 50x. And that is going to be the equation for the maximum, the maximum uh, kinetic energy. So now all we need to do is solve for x. So subtract 50 on both sides, we get negative 50 x equals 3, so x equals negative 3 over 50, which when you plug it into your calculator, it gives you negative 0 0.6 meters. Okay? And now lastly, part E asks for the value of the maximum kinetic energy. So since we just found the position of the maximum kinetic energy, we can take the equation of kinetic energy, which was k equals uh, 3x plus 25x squared. And we can simply plug this value into the x. So we're going to be, we're going to do k equals 3 times negative 0 0.6 plus 25 times negative point, negative 0 0.6 squared. And when you plug that into your calculator, that is going to give you 0 0.09 joules. So that is how you do number 33 in the Fundamentals of Physics, 8th edition by Drew Walker in chapter 7. I hope this was helpful. I would like you to please like this video if you found it helpful. Comment something, either a question about something I did here or a video or an idea for a video you want to see next. And lastly, do not forget to subscribe.